Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to design steel connections using RAM Connections Standalone. RAM Connections Standalone is used for the design and detailing of steel connections, and it can design individual shear, moment, brace, splice, and truss connection types to a variety of different steel design codes. For this particular video, we're going to be focusing on the workflow for assigning a double angle shear connection in RAM connection standalone to both beam column joints and beam girder joints. We will now turn our attention to our RAM connection standalone application. And we're going to start by selecting joint number two, which is a typical beam column web joint, which has a shear reaction imposed upon it. Now I'm getting ready to assign a double angle shear connection to this joint. I can go directly through the database, or I can go through either a basic or smart connection design workflow. I'm going to go with a basic connection design workflow. So I'm going to select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar, click the assign icon, and go to basic connections. Now I'm looking for any of the connection types with a DA in it. This would be a double angle. And I see I have a couple options here. I have a basic double angle all bolted, and I basically have a basic double angle that's going to be welded to the support and welded to the beam section. I'm going to go with a all bolted option. RAM connection has assigned the joint, the connection template to this joint. So I'll go ahead and click close. And let's take a look at the template it chose. It went with a DA, that's a double angle, BCW for beam column web. It's giving me the angle information. So here I can see that it's an L three by three by one quarter. That would be two of those, a double angle. And then four B three quarters. That would be four three quarter inch diameter bolts. Now, if I want some additional information on this connection, if I want to review the report or make any modifications, I can edit this connection by going to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar, clicking on the edit icon, and then I can ask to edit the shear connection. Now I'm going to rotate my model in the main view window, and to do that you could just hold down your right mouse button to spin it around. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the pieces of information that we can modify for a double angle connection. Here we can see for the connector I can adjust the angle size and material. I can also change it to a single angle instead of a double angle if I choose. Let's go ahead and take a look at the beam side information. You can see that that is a bolted connection, uh, but it can be changed to a welded connection if you'd prefer. And then again, for the connector side, you can go with either bolted or welded. I've gone with bolted connections for both the support and the beam size. You can see it went with 3 quarter inch A 325N style bolts, but we do have a full bolt database that I could choose from. And you can see I can adjust the types of holes that I wish to use. Now, if I'd like to review the steel connection report, I can go up to the ribbon toolbar and click on the results icon. Within this report, I'd be able to see all of the geometric considerations and the design checks that were performed along with their status and the critical strength ratio that was determined through this process. If I would like some additional information, I can come up here and click on the view formulas icon, where I'd be able to see all the formulas and variables that were used to arrive at these results. The last thing I'm going to do while in the connection pad is let's go ahead and take a look at the DXF view. Here you can see that the DXF has been created. I can modify the font and the layer information, and I can also export this DXF. Now, if I had made any changes within the connection pad, I can click on the save icon, which would then save it to that particular joint. But since I didn't make any changes, I can go ahead and close out of the connection pad. Now, in addition to joint number two, let's also take a look at joint number five. This is a typical beam girder joint, again, with a shear reaction imposed upon it. Let's go back up to our sign icon and this time, let's go with a smart connection workflow. And again, I'm looking for the acronym DA for double angle. You can see here in the smart connection workflow, I can go with an all bolted or welded option. And I can also control whether or not it's bolted or welded to the support versus the beam independently. When we talk about a beam girder joint, when you see support, that is indicating the girder section. I'm going to go with a smart DA all bolted connection type and then we'll click close. 
And then again, I can review this connection information in the connection pad for a shear connection type. Now for a beam girder joint, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the pieces of information we can modify. For the beam girder alignment, I could go with a top approach or a centered approach. So by default, it goes with the top of the beam and the top of the girder at the same elevation. Or I can adjust that by going either with a centered or a variable distance. And you can see for the connector information, I can also adjust the angle and the connection pieces of information from the beam side and also the support side. Now, if I were to look in the ribbon toolbar in the connection pad, I could see that my current connection design is passing. So I'm not gonna make any changes. I'm just gonna go ahead and close out of the connection pad. Now, at this point, this concludes our process for assigning a double angle connection template to a beam column or a beam girder joint for the purposes of resisting a shear reaction. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.